and thirty, and then if we decided we'd give you back the thirty dollars. Well, once we issued them the case, we we would be obligated to giving them the thirty dollars. Only if we collect. Well, Agree. Okay. Now, what is your collection rate? Of the cases that you have been given, what percentage do you collect? So if we have $300,000 in outstanding debt, what can we expect to see collected through your firm and over what time period? That's a very good question, Council Member. Um, the average, of course, of the portfolio, the collection rate that depends on the portfolio itself. Obviously, the older the case, the much harder it is to find somebody to collect it. So looking at what we say, looking at the portfolio that's initially turned over to us, what we use to estimate that as far as a collection percentage is, we go off essentially 20%. 20 to 30% would be a good accurate estimate, would be a good collection rate for the old cases that are going to be turned over to us. After that initial phase of that initial portfolio that's turned over to us, you're looking at anywhere between a 30 to 40% collection rate of the current stuff that would initially be coming in after that initial phase of the uh, old backlog that's out there. And what kind of time frame are you uh, saying that you can do this 20 to 30 percent? Is this in, in a year's time? Is this three years' time? Well, what kind of time frame are we looking at? If we have $300,000 out there, you're saying you can collect 80 to 90 thousand dollars of that. Uh, over what period of time would it take you to collect that 80 to 90 thousand well, dollars? Again, it depends on what is being turned over to us. It's hard to answer that without actually having the cases what we do, it's an, it's an additional tool for the judge and for the, the court. We, uh, we find the difficult people, that's our job. We're trying to locate, we have uh, skip tracing and call centers that locate the people. That's part of the, the initial um, problem is finding the people. And once we find them, then we enforce it. And of course, with, with this kind of uh, enforcement, the only, you know, the only uh, thing we can do is, is assist the court and, and help them. And uh, we have a, 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 a proven record of bringing in money in this way for well, the city. And, and that's specifically what I'm asking is, is what is your rec record? Is, is there something in here that shows specifics of where you've gone into cities and taken over X number of dollars in, in uh, delinquent accounts, which is called that, and in this period of time you collected X number of dollars? That's the kind of data I'm looking for. And would you consider, or would, is, uh, would you be considering taking all the, we're giving them all the 300000 Oh, I, I see what you're We are still going to have, our, have the in-house collections. This is just an additional collection tool for the court to assist us in, in yeah. bringing in um, the full punishment and money owed on the cases that we're having. But in past history of the cities that you're collected, they have an average of what you're collected. Okay. There's, there are comparables in that brochure that we provided. Every contract, every entity is specific. In other words, you want to be able to compare specific entities with the similar demographics of the city of Florida. We provided some of those, for example, I know some of the uh, entities that we collect for around us are uh, Seguin, Congo, and also uh, Bandera. And so, you know, looking at the surrounding entities, there's some comparables in there, some charts as far as what we've done for other uh, entities that are similar to size to the city of Florida. Okay. How far back do these funds go? Do you have an idea? How far back? Oh, it's a period of over 10 years. It's all cases that are that are owed to us. So we read reports for over 10 years. You see, any cases, but the ones that warrant is the one that it's going to be a warrant until it's clear to school. But we have records there. If they have money, it's going to be But would it be right, though, to add on 30 when they couldn't, maybe so many people couldn't pay it? Well, when we have something like that, if they're indigent or, or the hearing, that if they request an indigent hearing, we determine at a hearing whether or not the, their alternative method of payment. See, that's my thing that, that if, if there's old tickets and then you add on 30, and then I have a ticket and I can't really afford it, and then it on 30 more, you know, I understand that we got to convey that. And, and that's what I meant by that the judge obtained some take control over assessing that 30% fee. Well, once and we were to make the call, and then the and then the uh, defendant comes to the actual court, appears before Judge Garza, and she has the ability to say, you know what, after reviewing the facts of this case, it's not going to be assessed, and that's what I mean by sure things. But we still owe you the 30%. No, no, no. no for, of the fees that you collect, according, I, I may have misunderstood that, but let me go to another question then. 
You say we have $300,000 worth of delinquent debt. How much of this $300,000 over the past 10 years or however long it's been there would we be turning over to this firm for collection? But 30% is in addition to. No, no, no. Of the $300,000 that we have in delinquent out there, how much of that would you be turning over to this firm for collection? So 30% will be in addition to because that's not imposed yet. Okay. And I understand that, Judge. You told us you have $300,000 in delinquent debt that we're having difficulty collecting. Of that $300,000 of delinquent accounts, how many of those are you going to ask this firm to try and collect? Is he saying say that the, the three hundred thousand cases, all, all the cases that are, that are there that we have, we're going to turn over to the firm. But how do we know that some of these? We won't know. We won't know until the. That's what I'm saying. I would, I, would, I, would, I would hate to do that to, to turn over thirty percent to somebody. If you're going to turn, that's what he's asking. You're going to turn all these cases to them, and then say somebody got a ticket here and say, "Well, let's do uh, judge. Uh, I have a ticket." And say, "Well, I'm sorry, some connection for thirty percent." So you're already typed on without talking to the. I mean, I know they had plenty of time to pay it. We still have yeah. that case in our court, so I said we still have complete control of that case. If we collect on it, and if that 30% is, is added on, they get their 30%. It's not going to cost the city anything. Yeah. It, well, the well, defendant doesn't, doesn't have the money to pay. The, the defendant has a right to a hearing. If it, at the hearing it's determined that the defendant is indigent and there are alternative methods of payment and no monies come in, the firm doesn't get their 30%. It's not considered collected if the judge has cleared it and whether she's, she's reviewed it and cleared it and made a determination whether or not there is an alternate method of payment that needs to be done. So it's not that just because you turn it over to us, the 30% is, is an absolute. It's the judge's discretion to still so, make that determination. So if y'all collect, if y'all go to collect $100 on the on fine, and the judge, it comes back to, to the judge, and the judge suggests that the court is, or, or the, the fee is diminished or, or lowered to $50. You all get 30% of, of that $50 of whatever the final cost is for the fee, uh, or for the final of the sentence. It's what, it's, yeah. Whatever she suggests. It's what she decides. Her yes. order is what we Now want. is in uh, Judge Garden, Judge Sheila. Medina, now um, is um, is there still options for deferred adjudication and so forth? Okay. So theoretically, that three hundred thousand can be a lot less. Okay. Yeah. Can you make this recommendation to the council? based on the questions that have been defined. Uh, item 4A and item 4B are integrally collect connected. Uh, the first is the contract for fines and fees. And I'll take responsibility for not making sure that the contract showed up as a separate item as opposed to part of the advertising package. Uh, it's the back item in the package. Uh, but we did ask the firm for a couple items. If you look at section 2.03, uh, there's a reference to the penal code that they're tying into. And if you look at the ability that the city has, you have the discretion to say yay or nay on how the contract proceeds, to proceed to provide whether the services meet your quality standards whether or not you want to terminate. Um, my suggestion for tonight is, since this appears to be an item that's not well uh, presented in your dockets that you've had a chance to study, is that ordinarily I recommend that we have the first reading on the ordinance, we publish it in the paper, and we come back and do it I'm prepared because your charter allows it. We recommend that the ordinance be approved tonight subject to the publication. But I think that on item 4A and item 4B, based on the questions, and I'll say this to you, Judge, I think the council needs the information on how much there is to be collected, uh, some information maybe from you folks on percentages, 
and that we defer these two items with the manager's approval to the next council meeting because ordinance has to be approved to go with the fines and impose the 30 percent i think it deserves because this is a major change in the collection process it deserves a little thoughtful consideration by any and all of you and so i'm going to make the recommendation that we tell these folks and I just met this young lady, I've been dealing with her by phone for 15, 18 years, uh, since she was five, uh, <laughs> she says. But um, they're a reputable firm, they do good work in the tax area, uh, but this is a new endeavor for Floresville, and one that I think is appropriate, but I think you ought to know the numbers that you're asking for, Councilman. I think we ought to know the numbers that you got, that you're talking about total collections on, and that we ought to do the newspaper advertisement for the public to be apprised, and we ought to bring this back at the next council meeting for the same two items, if that's everybody's accord. But I think information needs to get to all of you so you can be comfortable in closing the ordinance that the legislature has authorized, and you can be comfortable with the contract. And that's my recommendation to your city councilor that we give this matter a little more thought and a little more detail, and if there's other detail that members of the council want before we take it up again, please tell us now so we can... Uh, Will we see a final contract rather than a sample? Uh, it should have been labeled a final, but, but yes. And we can get that to you by <coughs> email ahead of time if there are any other changes that need to be put in. And I think you hit on the point. There's, there's two pieces of numbers that I think are critical in this. One, and Andy, you guys are probably the best poised to do this. Annually, what are the fines, that, or, or what are we putting out there in, in fines? And what percentage of those go delinquent? Granted, we've got $300,000 worth. How long did it take to, to, to accrue that? So that we're looking at that. And then specifics on this $300,000, I think are the numbers that I would like to see. Obviously, the contract and a little bit of the collection history of this company as it relates to a community like this. And as such, I'll make the motion to table, subject to those terms, to the next meeting. Okay, let's make sure we got the data straight. We're gonna give them data for 10 years, can we do that? And, and what we've been doing annually in terms of delinquency, and in what you all might expect in terms of I know the delinquency would be less collection the longer it is, but it can give us some idea of what it might look like if the council approves it. And the ordinance, I think, is self-explanatory and probably not complicated, uh, but the contract, again, I think we have the right to terminate it pretty much at our cause, uh, but the firm uh, will renew unless we choose not to, so it continues from year to year. We can change those terms if we want. Uh, I'll take the calls from the council as a suggestion and pass them on and we'll talk about it. But I'd make the motion that we give 10 years worth of data to you, the collection rates, we furnish it to these people, we bring it up next time, and that we do the appropriate advertising. Public number. And who will draft the contract? The, the contract is here. I don't need to do too much to it. But I'll work with them. We've already had some discussions with them. And I'm not positive the one that you printed tonight had actually all of our changes, but I thought they did. Yes, that, that was a lot of that. Okay. Is that going to be so, item A and B? A and B, Your Honor. As such, motion to table both till the next council meeting, subject to the terms that Mr. Rosenberg described. A second. I have a motion by Councilman Miller, second by Councilman Rodriguez. All in favor to table this? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Fine. And, and Madam Mayor, may I ask one question? Sherry, can we get this in next week's paper? Without any problem? If you give me the ordinance in the proper form, I can get it to the paper tomorrow and have it in next week. We'll use the caption as it appears tonight <laughs> for notice purposes. And we'll just publish the caption as it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that what you mean? Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Well, you'll have more time to catch up. <laughs>
I'm not trying to make this onerous. I'm just trying to give the public a chance to know. Okay. Okay. You've been in the public sector long now. Thank you, Mr. Jason and Ms. Chapman. Okay, now we're going to go on to item 4C, consideration and action to approve the final plan proposal common subdivision, commonly known as the Holiday Inn Express. Cindy? Um, Mayor, so what we have here is a the final plan um, for the affordable commons. It was presented to PMZ last Wednesday. Um, it was approved unanimously 5 0 to. Uh, Final plat. However, we do need to know that on this final plat, um, and it was highly recommended by our engineer that that how the Holiday Inn Express people understand that the tech stop driveway permits is not is only the responsibility of the developers, not the city of They do have access to their development, but it has been known that tech stop may come back and say. You know, we need to get a and um, they, they, we want to make it noted on the plat that they understand that tech stop, that they have to, the responsibility goes to the developer, have to see it. What about the comment that they made that they're using the existing <coughs> uh, Cal Camp driveway that it's not a new driveway? Exactly. That's, that, that's what they're using. They're using the existing, um, and that's exactly what our engineer was concerned about. He wants to make sure that in the eleventh hour, that the city and the developer knows that if they want to fix that, feels like they want the barriers there. The developer knows that they have to have to take care of that kind of city. And the developers already consented to that verbiage the on the plan. Yeah, okay. that's that's standard. That's the way it works anyway. Correct. Because <clears throat> they, uh, you know, they really can't alter. The driveway because it's already been approved. Well, that it correct? Is correct, but if you see, it's all concrete there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still to get the approval. Exactly. Well, it's already it's existing. It's, it's existing. existing. It was approved when the restaurant was built. But in correct. Text that might but still feel like they still may need to get a permit. Yeah, well, it's extra, you know, if it's a, uh, yeah. a, a, a it's extra. It's extra. <laughs> well, it's a 30 foot, if it's a 30 foot driveway <coughs> and you're, and now you're exceeding that no, 30 we're not, foot. We're, we're not touching it. Okay. Yeah. It is what it is. Okay. Yeah, it's the same curb cut I was watching. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> then we, all we have to do is approve that final plan for subject to P and Z. I'll make the motion to approve the final plan for Floresville Common Subdivision, commonly known as the Holiday Express, with the provisions that PNT requested. I do have a motion by Councilman Miller. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Morones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Five to zero. Now we're going to go on to item 4D, consideration and action to appoint final plan for the Dudan Subdivision. Again, the Dulan subdivision, if you look, I don't know if you have it in your packets, but it's located on the corner of Olia and Peach Street. What it is, it's a family um, owned by the, the Dulans are owned, um, it's owner finance. And what they want to do is they want to subdivide it into one, two, three, four, five blocks. Four blocks, I'm sorry. And there's already a mobile home place there, and it's placed on lot number one. And they want to place another home, I believe, in lot two. There's already services. There's already electrical. The owner, the one that's going to find it to them, had already put all the sewer and all the water meters there at those three lots in the front of Goya. And he's already put electrical on there, too. The thing is, when he sold his land to the brothers, he sold it just as one big lot instead of coming to us first to subdivide it. So now the brothers are here because they, we can't let them allow another home in unless it's properly subdivided. Do we have the, the appropriate frontage, yes. lot sizes, etc.? Yes. yes, we have the appropriate. There's one that has only 59. If you look at lot, well, lot number three, it only has 
has 59. So we're giving a variance here? Well, when the time comes when he wants to put in a mobile or a build a home there, we will ask him to get a variance for that. Why would we? Or, why don't we, why or would you we? can, yeah, or you can do it forward so you can leave that lot like With the subdivision piece, it's 59 feet per, and it need, needs to be 75. That's a big And what did planning and zoning say about that? They, their, their comments were. Uh, there was a couple of things that we needed to make sure on the plaque that it needs to be corrected was to reflect the appropriate wording because the plaque that I have here only says planning, planning, and planning commission, not planning and zoning commission. And also they needed to add elevation contours for the drainage. It wasn't on there. So I talked to their, um, to Larry Pollock who's doing their plaque, and he's at this time working on getting those elevations done, those contours, and adding the proper wording on that. Um, they did not have a problem with the uh, lot sizes, and they did not have a problem with all the services being there, and they did not have a problem with the road frontage. But that's like at the very end of the. Is, and, is it dividable in such a way that would meet yes. the requirements? Yes, sir. Okay. We have lots smaller than that, that half houses in Forest Park now. So. But it's dividable. And their grandfather did, so. No, I mean, this property that they're asking to subdivide can be divided in such a way that they would have the number of lots and it would meet all of the requirements or dimensions. Well, not that one that's for 59 credit. Okay, that's but what they, I'm asking. But they do have the, the depth. They do have 155, and the depth is only 100 foot requirement. But there's no way to divide it into the number of lots that they're requesting exactly. and maintain the front. I know what you're saying. In other words, if they would, because if I can show you, there's a little bitty piece of lot that actually is owned by FEDC. That's why it was, it's only. Well, actually, that's a little bit. But they, yeah, because what they did is they made two lots to 75 and they made the back lot. One of them, them pieces, or I had very little the rumor or what, but they had buried a whole bunch of tires yeah, on there. Which, which, is it one of those lots? I've heard of the two, sir, but I don't, that was just. But I think it's one of those lots included there. Which is the back, on the back side. Budget I'm not for sure, but I think they buried a whole bunch of tires on one of those lots. And then there wasn't an old blacksmith that they had buried that was supposed to make that as a little spot I believe that's a little square track. Yeah, yeah. That's a ruin. Yes. Yeah. So that that's owned by FEDC. Yes. <coughs> well, it says on the plat that it's owned by. Yeah, on this one. Yeah. This approving of the plat is not approving construction of homes no. or allowing anything else to go there other than that they can divide it into individual pieces. This particular lot that's only 59 feet, they would have to come back for planning through planning and zoning to get a variance to put anything on it. We're simply allowing them to take this residential property, currently already zoned residential property, instead of one lot and two four lots. Exactly. Now this this track three, the one that the one that's in question of the, the footage. Now what would what's the what's the frontage? Is it Goliath or is it Peach Street? Because I think that makes a difference. It's, it's because you'd be making a variance either on the side or the front. The, 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 the 59 foot spacing Goliath. Okay. And that's just gravel road from Peach Street. Does Peach Street? Yeah. 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 So It's Chilana Road. It's not Peach Street. It's all the way back. They it's a local subdivision. So it's already yeah. across the, the, the railroad tracks. Right. Across yes. the railroad tracks and Peach Street ends and then Goliad comes in here. But that turns from Goliad back to the cemetery is Chilana Road. Okay. Yes. I see it. One technical question here. 
the agenda item says appoint final plat. Can we take action to approve this final plat even though the agenda says appoint? Yes, sir, I think we can. I think we do have to do the uh, topographic features here, Cindy, as part of this process, either condition subsequent or condition preceding. Which one do you want? Well, I just noticed I said appoint. I didn't see approve. So, no, my, my point is, we, to, to comply with your subdivision, not subdivision, but your drainage and your... Oh, yes, all that's stuff, been, yes, sir. We need, we need them to do the topographic survey so that we know they're out of the floodplain or what portion. Right, but the, the drainage, um, I have spoke to our engineer, and um, the drainage, it goes, it, it, it actually drains from Goliath down that Chilada going to the river. And what our engineer... He, with notifying us that, but he still wants to see the contours because of the drainage on the map. Okay. And, and that's what I'm getting at is to protect the landowners, to protect subsequent purchasers, and to protect the council from plant, from improving something that we haven't seen. Do we want to prove this condition on seeing that further document or condition on having that that valid point, Councilor, and I, I'm going to jump in based on what you just said, and, and that we require many vendors or many property owners to submit these maps before they ever come to Council. Right. To approve it conditionally would not be fair. I don't think it's ready to come to Council for approval. Therefore, I make the motion to take. Thank you. Second. Do you have a motion to table item 4 b by Councilman Miller, second by Councilman Guerrero. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Five votes. Okay, now we're going to go on to new business item 4E, consideration and action to approve the variance for road construction for the Richardson subdivision. And then, um, Mayor, what we have going on with the Richardson's um, subdivision plat is they're also they're filing a plaque with the county as well, and the county um, is seeking a variance, or not the county, the, the developer seeking a variance for the city for the road because the, the county standards are not as ours are higher than the county's. And the reason that we need to do this is the county is going to be taking care of the road for the next two years. The private road? No, I could, it's not private. It's going to be, it's going to be public. So what are we, what are we giving them a variance on? That, that I, that's what I'm concerned about. If we're lowering the standard here because the county's going to take care of it, that I'm, I'm concerned about that. Well, it to be a variance for the, for the, the construction of the road the as well as the. the width. As well as the cul de sac for the road, the dimension. Right. Correct. Yeah, the criteria uh, that the city has is more stringent, of course. We require curving, we require, uh, I think that's the only one that, okay. and the width, that okay. is different. The issue is that if we impose our standards to that road, then we have to maintain it. Yes. Because it is a public, it, it is a public road, or it's going to be a public road. We sat with the county and talked about the issue uh, Mr. Bob Price is in the audience he wholeheartedly wanted us to annex all the way and annex that property but there are seven homes I believe yeah. in that area that uh, that would require voluntary annexation for us to be able to do that it, it's a lengthy process he is uh, ready to move on his project uh, so we can start business there. The issue is that if we do not, it's one of those weird things that we're dealing with right now in our ETJ, uh, whether the county is responsible, we're responsible. One of the issues is financial for the city, of course. If we impose the rules on that road, then we have to maintain it. And we, from what we've gathered from the council, we're trying to take care of what we own right now versus taking on anything else in the, in the near future. And that's not going to be a quick process for us to annex that. So the county said, give us a variance and we'll maintain it. Well, I, I appreciate that, city manager. I, I truly do. However, if there's seven pieces of property between us 
and that property. At some point in the future, be it we go through the normal annexation process of three years, or property owners decide to go through voluntary annexation, this is ultimately going to become part of the city. And we're going to be in the same situation that we're in today, where variances have been made and we have streets without curbs and we have streets that are not the appropriate width. I would rather not approve a variance so that we don't have to pick up the pieces in five years or ten years down the road because we've made this exception to policy. If our goal is to have city streets all curved, if our goal is to have sidewalks along every city street, if our goal is to have the appropriate width and drainage on all the city streets, and this will very probably become a city street, why are we giving up on that variance for the short term? It, it could be a number of years for one. It, uh, we would be maintaining a road that's not in the city limits uh, and would not qualify for a road maintenance tax. So that would have to be an added cost to uh, general, budget. general budget right now that basically we cannot afford. I'm opposed to uh, approving a variance in the ETJ uh, for, for the reason that we are experiencing today. You know, we sat in a, a budget workshop today as a council and got uh, talked to about tax rates and about general fund amounts and about capital projects and, and not planning appropriately. I think acting on this for the short term gain would be a mistake for the long-term plan of this city. And out of respect uh, for the councilman, I disagree. And I think it's in the best interest that we do uh, grant this variance. Because we are on the road to recovery. This is not something that we need to add on right now. And although it being a public road, the only thing it's accessing right now or will access is his property, the beach. Do you, do you have an approximate cost of what would be the difference between the county standards or the city standards? Because the way I see it is that if, if, if we uh, approve it as for the city standards, the, you're looking at, you know, at something that's going to be well built, well constructed, you won't have to maintain it for, you know, several years, you know, by, by that time, you know, things will be a little bit better financially. You know, do you, is there a... Do I have an estimate of that? No, I don't. Uh, my understanding is that it doesn't even really matter because the county's not going to approve a permit with your standards. So, I mean, um, where do I go there to say I don't know this issue? I've spoken to Ann Moshek, and they will not accept this plan without the variance. They will. If you could pay all the money to get it to our standards, but the county will not maintain the road. No, that's just the point that he made here, is that if we impose the city standards, the city's going to have to maintain it. Uh, the county's not going to have to maintain it. It would just be part of the permitting process that the city of Florida is going to maintain it. It's part of the ETJ because it's constructed, constructed the city standards. Chip sale or, or asphalt? 
the road. The road. How is it going to be constructed? Oh, the chip seal. The chip seal? Yeah. Okay, so, so that would make it uh, a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, it'd be chip seal. Chip seal is you know, the cheaper alternative to asphalt, being that you know it's going to tear up a lot quicker, and and you know the the county would basically be needing to maintain it two years, one or two years. The for the two years, if if the city were to have our specs, it would have to be done through asphalt, or would it have to be, or it could be done from chip seal as well. Okay. And, 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 the, and, the, and the surface can be of any... I'm not sure, so I have to talk to you. Well, it could be in the same situation as well. Mm -hmm. No, no, because no, Chipsio. kind of a unique issue and I think this brings to, to light a couple of real questions that we really don't know the answers to in that if we disapprove this variance what the ramifications would be uh, in the planning process for the county and the city I'm going to move to table until we can get answers to those questions and, and truly know what the ramifications are of approving this variance and or disapproving. Because if you don't get that, you don't get to build. Correct. 
Okay. Well, this is just a preliminary plat. I mean, that, okay, we're asking for a variance for the road construction, and then we're being asked to approve a preliminary plat. I mean, if we have planning authority, if we have the variance authority, okay, and, and we're going to yield that to the county and lower our standards, I think we're setting poor precedent. We've got issues of, of stuff that has been turned down in the ETJ that have threatened legal action because of some of the, the, the pieces in there. I think when we start giving variances to the standards that we've set, we apply them across the board. Uh, again, I'm opposed to the variance process here. I'm going to have to say amen to what you just said. For consistency, we're going to have to confirm those comments. At what cost? So two weeks cost is all I'm suggesting. Okay, but my question is, if you don't get this variance, there may be my mom. You don't get to build. Well, eventually I'll build. It'll be later. The, the county's not going to give you the permission no, to they will not they will not give you your building or whatever you need to do to get started until you get this. Well, he's already in the ETJ, so he would follow under under the guidelines of the, of the city of Floresville, not the county. But this Correct? plat is going to, the thing about this plat is it's not going to have our wastewater, it's not going to have our water, it's not really going to have our road there. But, but because it's in our ETJ, he is subject to file a plat with the city of Florida. And that's why the county says we need this variance from the city of Florida. And, and I'm, I'm, I may be out of text saying this, Mayor and Council, but um, in two years, you have the county maintaining this road. And in two years, we don't know when our annexation will come in place to take over and maintain those roads, the streets, and get it to where we need to have them. So whose maintenance does it fall under after the two years? It will still be the county. By the time we <coughs> are able to annex this one, the issue is... She just said two years, that the county is going to maintain it for two years. Two years, two years, what, two years what happens after the two years? So after the, so after the two years, oh, it's, gonna, it's after the two years, they will maintain it after two years? Or they, will, or they will maintain it for the two years after it's approved. Because that's going to make a difference because after two years, you know, the, the road's already going to be worn down, tip to, you know, the, the, you know, the basic construction is going to be broken down. So the city's going to have a lot more to maintain after the two years. So you're going to be in worse shape after the two years rather than, than giving it done right the first time. And the city's still going to have to maintain it. Yeah, there's still a lot of variables in that. And, mm -hmm. and the only reason that is we moved in this direction is because the council said concentrate what's within your city that we don't be providing services to outside an ETJ until we provide services to it. And this is an issue that this man needs to move on building a, a reputable business, which we need to lose some of our community but it is going out there. Uh, and we as, as, as staff do not see us moving in the annexation. We wanted that, we looked at it, yes. we found the, the major obstacles or he, he wanted uh, sewer service from the city. But to provide that is a cost that we can't bear and we can't provide because of where the property sits and how much it would take to get it to where we are. Like Cindy uh, Nichols said, we don't have the CCN on the water right. <coughs> we're not going to collect property tax and we're not going to collect any sales tax. So why should we uh, deny a variance on the road so he can move forward and, and an expense that we don't need? And by table, we're not gaining anything because we'll be faced with the same situation. It's, uh, it's, it's a very complex issue, and, and you are correct. These issues are, are, are being faced by the county and the city. Would you be able to give me some information as to it, whether the county is going to maintain it for the 
for the first two years, or if the main, or if it's going to maintain it after the two years. Cindy, I thought you said they were maintaining it for the first two years. I believe that's the point of the right. But I can double check. You know, I'm going to re-state my motion to table this item until we get answers to questions that we don't know. Again, I'm opposed to providing a variance on a property that will very probably become within the city limits in the next... 10 years. We looked at our street maintenance plan and the number of years it's going to take to bring our existing streets up to standards. And part of that basis is that any new street will meet our standards. And why do we want to approve less than the standards that we are requiring of everybody else to avoid having to maintain a road after two years? That if built properly, okay, maintenance will be at a minimum. And when that maintenance becomes a major portion of this, this is within the city limits. So I re-energize my table and call Madam Mayor, my motion to table. Were you gonna say anything on this bill? I was, but motion to table is, he's gotta determine, uh, Madam Presiding Officer, you need to determine if there's a second, if there's a second I can't argue. If there's no second, I can talk. So, so your recommendation was? No, you got to deal with the procedural thing first. Proceed, Mr. Proceed. Is there a second? If not, I'll, I'll, I'll address the council. Proceed. Okay, do I have a second on this? Okay, here's what your engineer says, and, and I think this does fit the other matter that we're all thinking about in the back of our mind. This is what Larry Heimer says is addressing the matter, and I showed this to Mr. Price, and I think it's his understanding. We understand that proposed development is located outside the city limits of Floresville and within the city of DTJ. I think that we all understand that. Because the development is located within the city of DTJ, the subdivision planning process is typically required to go through the city and be subject to the city's requirements, which is our code of ordinances. Section 152.53H, call the section requires a two 100 foot diameter right of way and a 180 foot diameter pavement area for a cul de sac, and the Wilson County standard requires a 130 diameter right of way with a 90 diameter pavement area. Section 152.53J2 and 3 pavement widths and right of way require a 60 foot right of way for collector and minor streets and a 42 and 30 pavement area, and the Wilson County standard requires a 70 and a 24. Section 152.53I curb requires the curbs be installed on both sides of the interior street, and the Wilson County standard does not require curbs. We do not know how much traffic will be using the proposed street section, which comes off 181, and as such, we cannot comment on the adequacy of the 24 foot wide county pavement section and the 90 foot diameter cul de sac. Section 152, here's the punchline. 152.71 variances in the city's code of ordinance provides guidance to the commission for granting variances. In other words, it authorizes variances. Correct. And, and I guess the point that I would make is I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that we have several other projects that are in the ETJ. If we grant this variance tonight, we'll probably be in a position of me urging you to grant the other variances and the precedential value of this is, is to support the development uh, that Mr. Price is asking for. And when we other matters come up similarly disposed, I'm going to have to make the same recommendation that we can sit for. I know it has a different precedent that we set. The precedent we're setting tonight is a poor precedent, is what you're saying. It is poor precedent, but the finances of the city, pretty much, unless we want to impede development, pretty much dictate that we're going to have to go to the lower standard until our budget allows us to do otherwise. Well, we can we can approve certain variances, but there's about three very variances involved. Involved, right. so we can possibly, after getting all the information together, we can come back and we can approve with specific variances. Right. 
I just, I just want to kind of position this so that we, we have an understanding of what the engineer is recommending and so that we can treat the other matters in a similar fashion when they're coming for us. I'm not, I'm not for it. Mr. Price, can I ask a question? It's clearly that the city council does not want to impede your development. And that, that, that is not the intention here. Obviously, we have to look at applying the same standards across the board, whether you're building a car dealership or you're putting in a McDonald's or, or you're putting in an apartment complex. And understand that, that approving a variance is setting a very, very poor precedent so that everybody can come in and now ask for variances across the board and you become the example. My question to you is, if, is there a, a, a medium place that we can come to, okay, be it the curves or be it the width or be it the, 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 the angle in that cul-de-sac that is acceptable to the city and cost effective for you in the next two weeks so that at the next council meeting we can approve this, the county can approve this, and you can go on. Miss Cindy, yes. do you have the the variance on on the, the specifications on Lolo no. or the cold set? Because um, there was a variance on that as well. That was planned as such by FPDC. Okay. Is that okay? FEDC doesn't have the approval, the authority to apply. No, when they presented it, it was presented as such to the council and the DMT. The council approved it? Yes. So there's a, you know, again, the precedent uh, of where all this comes from. You know, setting the precedent, you know, the, uh, it's been done before, you know, it, and, and we, you know. Well, it's kind of a very difficult situation here. On the one hand, don't give me a variance in, in the EPJ. On the other hand, the county doesn't want to give me a permit because they don't want to live up. They can't maintain the roads at your standards. I mean, where, where does that leave, you know, the business person, the, the guy that's trying to make a difference? With it? Well, that's the question, you know, that, that, we're still, that, that I'm still needing to, to, hear, to get.